We have been using the Logic of English Foundations Level A program with my four-year-old son, and I want to share with you all about it today. Hi there, I'm Sarah. I have a four-year-old son and a three-year-old son and then a baby, and we've been using the Logic of English Foundations Level A. We have found some really surprising things with this program. I have a video about the surprising benefits of the Logic of English that you can check out. I'll link it in the description box below. But today I'm going to share with you my overall thoughts about level A. We are going to use level B. That's the plan. So you can already see that we really appreciated this program. I thought it was amazing. What comes with this program? If you buy the full package, you get, of course, the teacher's guide, the student workbook, and um, the book Doodling Dragons, which pairs well with the songs, which are available in MP4 mp3 format and also available for free on youtube that's where we listen to them there are some game cards some phonogram flashcards, and some tactile learning cards as well as some reference guides for handwriting and the phonograms and spelling rules all of these are great resources we have used all of them so far and i think they're all valuable and worth purchasing as the entire set this program is recommended for ages four to seven years old. I had it on hand for a while before we actually started using it and I delayed using it because my son is four years old and seemed like he was on the lower end of both the spectrum and the ability level for this program. However, when we started, he dove right in and he was able to comprehend everything. So I do think that that level uh, age group spectrum is accurate. My three-year-old also participates when we have these lessons, but he isn't able to grasp quite everything yet. The Logic of English is a research-backed program that teaches all parts of language arts, including things like speech, phonics, reading, and spelling, and writing. So it's all of the programs in one. Because it is meant to be used in either a classroom or a homeschool setting, you find that it has included a list of common core standards that are met by each lesson. This can be really helpful for homeschoolers who have to do reporting to their state or their local government. Um, throughout the entire course, the lessons are very detailed. Each lesson starts with a list of the objectives of the lesson, the materials you are going to need, and other information that is important for you to know at the beginning of the lesson or before starting. And then you also have just boxes throughout the pages that tell you things like speech tips, book connections, um, things to be aware of as you're teaching your child this sound, problem shooting tips, tr troubleshooting tips, I should say. The approach to phonics is spelling your way into reading. I had not encountered this before, so this was very interesting to me, but I have found it to be very helpful. Some children do struggle with their writing skills, and so they might actually be reading faster than they're writing. Um, that is something to be aware of uh, if you are looking at this program, is it does want you to be spelling everything, but there are options for children who are younger or children who are struggling with spelling to be able to complete the activities, but simply in another way. And that's one of the things I like about this program. There's a lot of differentiation that is made note of throughout the program. And so you are able to complete activities without actually following the exact same thing for every single student. Foundations Level A is not exactly intended as an entire year of curriculum. We have been using this about a lesson per day, which will get us done actually in just a few months time, but you don't have to use it that way. You can do just a few lessons per week or you can break up the lessons. There are extension activities at the end, games that you can do, um, ideas for practice after you have the assessment and you notice my student wasn't able to do this or that. Um, there are things that you can go back and do um, but for us this has taken about 10 to 15 minutes per day we don't do the all of the games at the end of each lesson um, but we do everything else basically um, we also sometimes do the handwriting we sometimes don't my son attends a half day preschool and so he's been working on handwriting there and we've actually found that to be adequate for this stage of development but I really do like how this program teaches handwriting so in the future with my other son we'll probably use this strictly for his handwriting because it is also meant for a classroom as well as a homeschool there are some activities for groups and there are activities for individual students we have found that the lists for those activities are often really long there is a long list of words for a specific activity and that's because there can be multiple students doing it. So what we do is we just pick a few words from the list for ourselves and we just do those. 
it's just me and my son. We don't need to spell 20 words together and exhaust ourselves. Instead, we just pick three, four, something like that, and we're done with the activity. And activities are really fun. We've enjoyed them so far. My children have actually asked me to redo some of the activities, and so I can tell they really enjoyed them and they felt accomplished. There are many interactive components to this program, including things like letter tiles. Um, I'll say a bit more about this in a little bit, and some tactile cards, and then you have a whiteboard. And there are also game cards, phonogram flashcards, um, and it's just, there's a lot to this program. If you look at their website and you see their foundations level A package, you see that it is a bit more expensive because it includes all these materials that you don't have to buy again later, um, but the materials are worth it in my opinion. I used another program for teaching some basic phonic sounds to my sons, and I found that the absence of songs with that program just made it less catchy. So I love that the Logic of English has songs. We listen to them daily. My sons sing them while they're playing. They can recite them back to me. Plums, craving, crackers, and rice. Plums, even when we're looking at the doodling dragons book my sons are able to sing the song from memory based on just what they see in the pictures and um, that has been really helpful for them to memorize all of the sounds because the logic of english teaches every sound of every phonogram from the very beginning. Um, this is amazing to me as a teacher, um, but also has led to some surprising benefits. Again, I'll cover those in the other video. Um, but means that if without the songs, you aren't as able to remember that A says A, 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 unless you're just simply strictly memorizing it. So I love that the memorization comes more naturally through the songs. Um, this was actually really helpful already for my oldest son because he was sitting in his bed looking at a book and he was wanting to read the words and he read the word jug, but then he came to the word cake and he was like, k ah, k -e -yeah. and so I ha got to explain to him, oh, remember the A says several sounds and this word is going to say A. And before we even had any discussion of long vowel sounds, he was able to decipher, this is cake. Oh, okay. Um, and so that actually is really helpful. I think in our experience, at least, that teaching all of the letter sounds from the very beginning. There are some digraph sounds, diphthong sounds that are not taught from the very beginning. Those are taught later on because those are actually two letter formations, two letter phonograms. Um, but, um, so that's just something to note. You're not going to be overwhelmed with a ton of information from the very beginning and memorizing every possible combination of each letter with every other letter. Um, you're just learning the basic sounds that, that that specific phonogram can make. The lessons are very scripted. This is really helpful. I find that sometimes I'm not exactly sure how to explain something, especially at this level, to my son. And the scripted lessons make that really easy and possible. You are told which things to say, and then you're told instructions for you. There are also, like I said, boxes throughout the lesson that are different tips for differentiation, for troubleshooting, um, things to look out for when your child is forming a sound or repeating a sound. And then there are some speech tips. And we have found the speech tips really beneficial for our family because my oldest son struggles with some speech language issues. Um, and so those have actually been really, really helpful. One of the things the program does is it emphasizes the segmentation of words, even from the very beginning, because you're spelling your way into reading, you're recognizing that words are made with different sounds, and that is what we're learning when we're learning letters and phonics. And so you are learning how to segment the words and then to blend the words back together uh, from the very beginning before you're taught any of the letters, you're just doing this as practice. I think that's really helpful. Um, but because you're segmenting the words, you're focusing on the sounds and the formation of the sounds as well. And so the program actually leads you through exercises where you're learning how to differentiate vowel and consonant sounds. And my son does that really confidently now. Um, you're also learning how the sounds are formed in your mouth and you're asking the child to tell you the difference between two sounds. I'll try to insert a video here that shows my son doing that with two uh, different phonogram sounds. Ah, ooh, same or different? Same. Different. Okay, how is your mouth different? Ah, oh, means your lips are so close. 
the gator and say, oh, your, your mouth is wide open. So your child or student is telling you how the letter sound is formed in their mouth um, and then how another sound is formed and what's the difference between those two formations. It's great for troubleshooting. If your child is having some speech language issues, then you are able to tell, what are you doing in your mouth? Here, look at what I'm doing in my mouth and copy that in your mouth. And so it's actually a really great at-home speech therapy. It's not a full, full program or anything like that. I'm not saying you don't need a speech therapist if there are issues there um, to step in and help with this, but it is helpful as a parent to bring or as a teacher to bring awareness to issues that might be there. Um, the program gives you the option of using cursive or manuscript for handwriting. We chose cursive based on the idea that that would be easier for students at this age because you're not actually picking up your pencil. But again, because my son had learned just regular print form at school, um, he was just wanting to continue that. And so I found that learning cursive at this age is not on our priority list. We might come back to it in the future and redo the cursive, um, but you do have those two options. In my experience, I would probably go back and just choose a manuscript um, based on our what we've learned so far about my son's interests, um, but you do have those two options. And I do think it is helpful to at least have the card sets, the game card sets. Um, let me show you some examples of them. Um, in in both the manu book face and the cursive form because learning to read cursive, I think is a good skill for any student to have. Um, there are just, yeah, so many ways in which knowing cursive is helpful in life. Within the student workbooks also, there are multiple fonts used on some pages where you're introducing a phonogram so that the student can learn to recognize that phonogram in various ways of writing it. Uh, let me find an example here for you. Okay, the letter T, for example, you'll have some that are more like, um, what's it called? Comic Sans font, and then others that actually have like a really long tail to them. Then on other pages, you have matching activities where you're matching cursive and book face. Okay, the time per lesson varies greatly, of course, on your child and their age level. This program is recommended for ages four to seven. My son is on the lower end of that range, and he had some background in phonics already, so I can't say yet what this would require time-wise for older for students who are going from scratch. But for us, what we found is with the basic understanding of letter sounds that my son already had and some blending understanding that he already had, we were able to get through about the first 23 lessons, each of them in one day per lesson. So lesson one was one day. The next day we were able to do lesson two. At the point though of lesson 23, I realized we need to start splitting these into smaller segments and doing them over the course of a week or so. One, because the difficulty level um, was progressing quite quickly. And two, because I realized that we were beginning to get a little exhausted with just pushing through um, so many lessons so quickly. And I wanted the lessons that we were learning to actually start really sinking in. Um, we needed a little bit more, hey, you wanna talk to you, huh? We needed a little bit more reading practice. And um, and so after lesson 23, we started slowing down. And at that point, we started doing uh, one lesson per week. The logic of English moves super fast in its program and goes from letter sounds to consonant blends and from writing letters, like basic formation of the letters, to spelling four and five letter words within the same first book, actually within just a few lessons within the first book. It, because of that, it's really important, I think, to pay attention to how quickly the student is actually gaining fluency and confidence in reading. And so I am supplementing with another resource called Elemental Phonics and also possibly looking at the good and the beautiful uh, to help make sure that my student is confident in his reading, that he is progressing really well. Even though I would supplement those things, I would still choose in the future to use Logic of English instead of just looking for another resource or just turning to the supplemental resources because Logic of English teaches so much more than phonics and also teaches how language works. Uh, for example, voice and unvoiced sounds, nasal sounds, segmenting words, blending them back together. 
I definitely plan to keep using the Logic of English and supplementing at least level A, Foundations A going forward. There are 40 lessons and every five lessons there is an assessment. I love these assessments. Testing is one of those things that I think homeschoolers especially should not be afraid of. It's one of the things that helps you actually understand what your student is struggling with and to meet their needs. It's not just about them being able to reform. It's actually really helpful as a teacher. So every five lessons there is an assessment and in those assessments you are given some Re remedial work. If your child is struggling with a certain part of the assessment, you are told at the very end of the assessment, go back and do these activities if this was hard for your child. You're also given a scoring sheet. So at the beginning, you're told uh, if a specific activity within the assessment is worth one or two. One being they should be familiar and able to do it somewhat, and two, they should be showing signs of more proficiency already. So for things like new phonograms or that kind of thing, you're often told for the first assessment, it should be a one. And then the next assessment, it should be a two. Um, so you're able to measure as you're going along how your student is progressing. The assessments themselves contain some games. So you are doing them in a fun way. Still, you're not just sitting down and having your student write on a piece of paper. Instead, they're like the lessons, they're actually really, really similar in style and progression to the lessons themselves. Because there are only 40 lessons, you might not be able to use this one program for the entire school year. I have heard of multiple people doing foundations level A and B within the first school year. Um, that of course depends on the child's progression. Our family did not have access to level B and we also began halfway through the school year on level A. So I can't really tell you if that was if that is doable, but we do plan on continuing with B and C this coming school year and I will keep you updated about how that goes for our family. The program uses really technical vocabulary. You're saying the word phonogram to your students. There's a script within the book that tells you exactly what to say. You don't have to say it, but I do often. Um, and I thought that using the word like phonogram or other technical words would be way over my son's head. He doesn't even bat an eyelash. Like it, it just makes sense to him. We're just doing the activity. Other students, it might be a bit of an issue if they want to understand every single word you're saying to them. The student workbook is consumable. It's recommended that you have one for each student. We have been using it differently, however. Um, we just, when we're doing the assessments or the exercises, I just have my son point to things rather than actually drawing a line. We live overseas, so getting a second copy of this means that we'd have to get it during our travels, which is only every two years or so. Um, so with my sons being so close in age, we decided just going to use it this way because we didn't plan ahead so well. Uh, but you can use it per student, or like I said, you can actually just point to different things. I do find that helpful. Uh, at the upper stages of this workbook, I think you can't do that. And also in the back of the workbook, you have um, some activities that you're going to cut out and some readers. There is no separate reader program in this level. Um, instead, you have the readers in your book, in the back of the workbook, and you're cutting those out, and you're also cutting out pictures. And this is one of the things I really appreciate about the readers at this level, is you're matching the pictures with the words that you're reading. So you're really focusing on comprehension of what the child is reading. And that's really helpful um, because at this level, you're focusing so much on forming the sounds of the letters and the words um, that you can sometimes forget about the comprehension piece. So something I really appreciate about the readers. This is a full language arts program. So you have handwriting and spelling, the beginning of spelling there with um, segmenting phonograms in words. And then you of course have the phonics and the reading as well as um, just overall, not literature, at this point but you're building the basis for the literature you're going to have later on. I also love that this program includes speech which is within the field of language arts. Um, I, my son has some speech needs and so the tips throughout the teacher's guide have been extremely helpful. Um, let me just highlight those tips for you. So this was something that I noticed when I was first looking at the program but when we actually started looking at it, uh, using it <laughs> rather, um, I was amazed at how helpful these tips are. So there are tips on the sides that tell you some ideas for doing a letter T day and all the things that you could eat or do together um, for 
focusing on different problems that are really common with students when they are segmenting words, such as they're actually putting together um, two sounds that, rather than segmenting those apart from each other. Um, and so it tells you what to look out for. Then there are speech tips. So when you are working on the phonograms, the, it tells you that some students might try to make the sound a certain way, um, other students might make it this way, and so sometimes it's not a problem, but other times it's like, this is how you can teach them to do it the correct way. Um, also, because the program is focusing on voiced and unvoiced sounds, um, you are learning how the sounds are formed. Um, and you're also asking your student where the sounds are formed, how the sounds are formed within their mouth. I have more about this in my video about the surprising benefits of the logic of English, but this is just an amazing part of the language arts program overall, and I want to highlight it here as well. There are so many interactive elements to this program, as I said, game pieces and that kind of thing, but also there's so much physical movement. You are forming letters with your body, you're doing um, running activities, you're doing jumping activities, all kinds of ball throwing activities. It's so, so active. Some of the activities are a little more challenging if you are teaching this to one student instead of a group of students, but they are doable. And there are our options, as I mentioned before, for groups of students versus individual students. Online support is available. This is really good. Um, you can purchase an online support program from the Logic of English website, and it has videos. I'm not sure about all of the elements because I have not used it myself, but that is available if you find you're struggling with the program um, or you just need some more support. How does the Logic of English compare with All About Reading? I have not used All About Reading, so I can't say fully the differences and similarities between these programs, but from what I have heard, here are a few of the differences. The Logic of English does not have fluency worksheets. Um, this can be a pro or a con depending on the needs of your family and your style of learning. Um, whereas the Logic of English does have fluency worksheets where you are reading through multiple words. All About Reading does not focus on spelling first and writing as well as learning to read. Whereas with the Logic of English, you are spelling your way into reading. You're learning how to segment words, pull them apart, look at the sounds within the word and put them back together before you're actually learning to read other readers and books. All About Reading has a separate spelling and a reading program, all about the spelling, all about reading. Whereas the Logic of English, everything is included together. As I said, phonics, reading, writing, spelling, handwriting, all of these are in one package. Um, another difference is that you, at least in Foundations Level A, are participating in making the readers. So uh, I really like the beauty of the All About Reading reader books, um, but with the Logic of English readers, you're actually putting the illustrations in yourself to show comprehension of what you have just read. So that's a, another difference. And the readers are included in the student workbook, at least in this level. Some of the things though that I noticed as we went through this program were one, the letter Titles. So this program has some little letter titles that are printed on some sturdy cardstock cardboard um, and they're great for playing games I think but for building the words it was a little more challenging because you had to make sure all of them were turned the same way so you could actually see the letters so we ended up just using our own magnetic letters for the writing parts of this program and so so far we haven't found a use for the letter titles. Another thing that I wish was different is for our family's own situation, I wish there were more letter, word family, <laughs> word family practice sheets or word family reading. Um, the readers are great. My son has been able to do well with those. Within the Logic of English Foundations A, there is a constant review through games and activities of the concepts that have been taught, the phonograms that have been taught, but there's not so much practice reading word families. As in a traditional approach, um, you, where you read through a word family list and you build words based on that word family. This kind of creates a weakness within the program, in my opinion, for students who need a bit more structure or who are not as familiar with reading to begin with and are not as confident. I have heard other people say this as well about the logic of English that they felt like you just need a little bit more reading practice. Um, and I'm not sure if that comes with later pro levels of the program. Foundations B maybe has a lot more of this. I haven't been able to look into that yet, but that's just something that I noticed about this program. So I plan on practicing fluency with my son with a program called Elemental Phonics. We have these pages already. They're just pages of word families. And I'm also looking at using the good and the beautiful language arts K 
uh, I would still choose to use Logic of English, even though I am supplementing it, instead of turning to another program or just turning to the supplements as my re main resource, because the Logic of English teaches so much more than simply phonics and also teaches how language works in things such as voice and unvoiced and nasal sounds, segmenting words, blending them back together, etc. But I definitely do plan to keep using the logic of English and supplementing it, at least through level A, Foundations A, going forward, just to make sure that my children have a very firm grasp of how reading works and are fluent readers. Um, before we even get into other blends and digraphs and diphthongs and that kind of thing in foundations B and C and D. So what is my review of this program? I love it. I adore it. As um, a, an English, as a second language teacher, although those acronyms for that change all of the time, just teaching English to speakers of other languages, um, I wish I would have had this resource when I was starting out in the classroom and I find it very helpful now with my own sons who are bilingual and they will find it helpful as they go in the future and possibly learn even other languages. Um, if I return to the classroom in the future, I think I will use this resource in the classroom with me. So that should tell you how helpful I think it is. I want to carry it with me throughout my life. Um, I did notice when I was looking for used copies of the logic of English on eBay that there aren't a lot, which tells me that the people who get this program tend to hold on to it or they just don't sell it. Um, that should be saying something. Everyone that I have talked to about the logic of English has loved it and we are no different. So I know there are people that this program will not work for, but I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to give it a try. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. You can check out my video about the surprising benefits of the logic of English right here, and I will chat with you guys in the comments. Ciao.